What's up, MMA fans? Back to do part six of the eight-part series for 2013 MMA Prospects. This video is featuring the heavyweights. It's a video I've been very excited to do for, you know, quite some time. I, I basically had put the video together a couple of months ago um, <clears throat> and just getting to it now. Um, you know, I've done a lot of videos over the years on the heavyweight division. Quite a few of those guys have gone on to, uh, you know, major promotions. I think this one here is the most, you know, compact and the most prospect-filled heavyweight uh, video I've ever put together. 26 fighters I'm going to talk about, and yes, there is many more guys that I am not going to mention that are on, you know, like I said, everybody who watches my videos knows no UFC or Ultimate Fighter experience, no Bellator experience, no Strike Force, no Dream. Um, nobody off Bloody Elbows' uh, previous list. And, you know, nobody mentioned on Share Dog's NAS uh, Energy Drink Prospect video. So, a new bunch, you know, and I could have made it 30 or 40 guys, but I decided to stay with 26. Not to say these guys are going to, you know, end up being stars, but most definitely I think you'll see, a, you know, a fair amount of them move on to major promotions if not a large amount, so, um, an interesting bunch of guys, and, and, you know, kind of shows, we've had some different people putting videos out saying, you know, the sport's kind of not, not excelling as much as they thought, but, you know, I, I have the opinion there is way more fighters now than there was, uh, five years ago, or, you know, even a year ago, so, this video is proof that the, the heavyweight division, although, you know, a lot of people argue it's the weakest and has the least amount of depth, it is actually growing, so, <clears throat> Without further ado, let's get started. The first fighter I'm going to talk about, Yusef Ali Mohammed. believe he's a Swedish fighter. I got him at 6'6 and a half, 265 pounds. <clears throat> AVM is the association he fights out of. Um, also, I think Andre is superior management. Um, he's another organization he's, he's with. 1-0 and all with one knockout. Yes, he only has the one fight. This guy's a monster at 265, like I said, 6'6 six, six and a half, all muscle, shredded. Um, karate is where he started his martial arts, although he hasn't taken any of that with him. That was many years ago. Um, submission wrestler, background, Shudo European champion, and uh, BJJ Swedish ADCC champ. Uh, BJJ Scandinavian Open Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu gold medalist. Yeah, he has had a couple of amateur MMA belts, won both by KO. Like I said, this guy is, you know, he's huge, fit, athletic, showing some speed. Uh, you know, the big BJJ background, just 24 years of age. You know, check out this guy's debut. Yes, it was only one fight, but if it shows that this guy has the ability to be an interesting prospect, um, you know, especially at heavyweight. Um, Dominating his, his his debut opponent in 22 seconds, I believe. Quick TKO. He showed some pretty good ground and pound. Um, against two fight uh, professional Dennis Soiko. So check out the video. Um, I'll put it in the link section below. If you want to see? Although he has one fight, this is the heavyweight division, and a guy like this really excites me. Um, you know, potential to be uh, you know effect of heavyweight if he continues to grow we don't know if the guy's a chin and how well he's going to progress but you know in the heavyweight division the prospect is there so a guy to check out for sure do yourself a, a favor check out the video Yusef Ali Mohammed. the next guy I'm going to talk about is I.N. Kutlaba a Moldovia from the country Moldova just 19 years of age, six foot one, 257 pounds, and he holds that weight very well. Three and all with two knockouts, uh, one submission. His longest fight was 42 seconds. <coughs> very raw fighter, but you know, looking at his background, Moldovian champion in combat sambo and judo, European champion in sambo. The height train is starting to build on this young guy. He really is a beast. Um, you know. Great to see a new interesting heavyweight prospect. Very raw and wild, you know, but he's got huge power, big ground and pound. Great Sambo background, good submission skills, very athletic, you know, lots of speed. And like I said, he carries that 260 pounds very well for being just uh, six foot one. Um, 
and also you know throw his his, his judo background in the mix as well. Um, you know, to me, this guy needs if this guy can have some a decent management look after him. To, you know, set him up with you know a few favorable fights to start, not against total cans, but you know get this guy going in the right direction, build some hype up behind him. You know, I think there's potential there. And at 19 years of age, I mean, this is a prospect. Um, do yourself a favor. Check out the video links. There's some Sambo and MMA matches I'll, I'll put in there. Very aggressive and violent fighter. Uh, practitioner of Sambo. Shows uh, one of his Sambo fights here. I'll put in the link. He's got a brutal uh, knee KO victory um, in a Sambo fight. And, you know, a couple of his MMA fights... Um, I recommend you check him out. Again, he's very young and raw, and, and you know, <clears throat> he's got a long way to go. But, again, for this division, he's an interesting prospect. So, I ain't cute lot, but I got to check out. Number three in the list, and a lot of, of course, NCAA fans will know about this fighter. Steve Moko. Six feet tall, 260 pounds. <clears throat> and here's another thing you're going to see in this video. A mix of young, a mix of middle-aged and older fighters. Um, you know, some early 20s, a couple of teenagers, a couple of guys are on the 30 mark, and then you're going to see a handful of guys that are mid-30s and even a couple in late 30s. It, because it's a heavyweight division, there's guys I want to talk about. Um, and Steve Moko is one of those middle-aged guys at 31 years of age. Made his pro debut last year. 1-0 <clears throat> with one submission victory. Coconut Creek, Florida, USA. American top team. Um... Who has the who's who for training partners, of course, <coughs> with coaching. Bigfoot, Cole Miller, Thiago Alves, Alexis Villa. Um, who else? Gleison Thibault, Jeff Bonson, Eve Edwards, Dan Hornbuckle, Mike Rousseau, or sorry, Mike Brown. You know, etc., etc., you know. And the huge X factor with the wrestling background, as I always say. 2002. University of Iowa, Division One NCAA runner-up, 2003 champion in the 285-pound division. Switch, he switched to the University of Oklahoma um, in 2005, where he won the 285-pound title without losing a match that season. Um, dominant high school wrestler, four-time New, New Jersey prep state titles, uh, four prep national titles, three junior national titles, um, also, he had one in judo, I believe. Um, also, won two Beast of the East titles. Four high, he's been a four high school award winner in 2001, where he won the high school rest of the year, the Ju uh, Junior Hodge Award trophy, the NHSCA High School of the Year, and the Dave Schultz Award. 2005, Dave Hodge Trophy, best collegiate wrestler. He lost in the finals in 2006 against Cole Conrad. And the 285, that actually snapped an 85 fight win streak for him. Um, 2009, he had two titles in two major Russian tournaments the Alexander Motsin Invitational and the Ivan Yushkov Memorial Grand Prix. Um, he also won, in, in mid 2009, he won the Senior Nationals Freestyle 120 kilogram tournament and gold at the Pan American Games Championships. Um, 2008, he made the U.S. Olympic team, and you know one of the reasons he got an MMA is he was training Bigfoot for his fight with Cain Velasquez, I think, and he enjoyed it so much he got hooked, and you know the rest is, is history. I know the guy is 31, but you know such a dominant wrestler, you know again that X factor, you know does play a fact, does play a role. So this guy gets two or three victories under his belt. There's no reason why he can't step up. And, you know, be successful in both Bellator or the UFC. Of course, we don't know, you know, if the guy can strike, etc. But an interesting guy. We, we, there is some video footage I'll put up. Um, his, his fight against Jake Yager was a very good uh, wrestling uh, college match. So I'll put it in the video or the information section below. Check him out. Another interesting guy, Steve Moko. Next guy I'm going to talk about, and, and some of these guys I'm going to zip through fairly quickly. <clears throat> you know, because I have 26 guys, it, this has potential to be a long video, and I don't want to do that to the viewers. But Volkan Ozdemir, Fleesburg, Switzerland. You know, is one of our first uh, Switzerland fighters to make it so far in this 
prospect uh, series. 6'1", 225, just 23 years of age. 6-0, oh, four TKO victories, one submission. Background, you know, I don't have a ton of information. He's young, he's a little bit raw. Showing some good grappling skills, some decent takedowns and takedown defense. Um, <clears throat> looks to be very fast and athletic. There's some decent ground and pound. He's showing some good clinch work. Um, you know, the dirty boxing, knees and striking. Um, you know, he's had some decent victories. You know, one was it, he used that, that striking in the clinch. And it, 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 a big, big victory over 8-5, and five, Bull Hair Bald. You know, who's a pretty decent fighter. Um, BJJ and Muay Thai background. Um, he's also, I think he's involved in a big kickbox, kickboxing tournament coming up in Denmark this March. Um, and he's competed a lot in BJJ Asia. And I think he's involved in our heavyweight tournament this year as well. Looking at this guy's record, um, you know, he's beaten 3-2. and two. Bruno Ferris, Grancho, and 8-5, and uh, Bubar Bald, I mentioned before. The combined record of his opponents is just 16 and 19. But you know what? The guy's 23. He's a heavyweight. He's 6-0. And, and I wanted to give him a shout-out. Um, I will put one video down in the section below. So check him out. Next guy I'm going to talk about. Very interesting guy. Um, Christenstein fighter. Hope I pronounced that country properly. It's, a, it's in Central Asia. Um... Alexander, or sorry, Alex Kropnikov, Krupnika, 5'9 and a half, 215 pounds, uh, the Christian Republic, 5 and 0 with 5 submission victories, all early in the first round. Looking at this guy's background, fairly significant. Freestyle wrestler, gold in 2007, bicycle, 96 kilometers, or kilograms. He won silver in 2004 and 2006 in the Asian Championships. The Asian Games. Like I mentioned, silver in, in 02 and bronze in 06. World Championships, he won bronze in 05 and as well as 2010. First in Olympic qualification tournaments in 2004 in the 96 kg. He won the European Championships Juniors in 98. That was in the 83 kilogram. Part of the Christian national team. He wrestled 2004 in Athens and 2008 in Beijing. Olympic and freestyle wrestling. He was supposed to fight Rico Rodriguez at Pro FC 43, but that fight uh, didn't materialize. Um, this guy actually has split fights in wrestling against Daniel Cormier, and I will put his victory over Daniel Cormier in the information section where you can check out the videos. So that alone is telling you this guy is the real deal when it comes to wrestling. Um, you know... He is a little bit older. I, I believe he's 34 years of age, but, you know, he deserves a shout-out. And, and this video, is, like I said, is a mix of prospects and middle-aged guys that I would like to see get a shot somewhere. Um, taking a look at his record, I mean, he's beaten 3-2 and two, Dennis Niklov. Combined record of his opponents was 9-21, uh, and 21, so, you know, definitely time for a step up in competition, but... Check out the videos on this guy. I put a, he's got a couple of uh, nasty slams in the first video I'll put up. The second video I'll put up is his Daniel Cormier fight. And a couple more fights I'll put up to check out. Alex Krupnikov. Hopefully we get to see this guy soon. Next on the list, and you know, I believe we may not see this guy for a while because apparently he's in prison now. Um, he got mixed up on like a hundred grand, some kind of visa scam, but you know... Um, hopefully he gets out because he's an interesting prospect, just like Tyler East was a guy I talked about a couple of years ago, you know, who still progressed and won a couple of fights, but hasn't made it to the big show because he's in pr prison still on cocaine charges. So hopefully not only Tyler East gets out, but this guy gets out. George Ignat, 6'3", 265 pounds, 28 years of age, Romania fighter, now fights out of San Diego, USA. 5-0, and all, one knockout, three submissions. Um, fights, trains out of the arena team <coughs> with the likes of John Tuck, Jake Mapes, Stephen Abbas, Xan Hivero, to name a few. Looking at this guy's background, again, another X-Factor fighter, eight-time Greco-Roman heavyweight champion in Romania. Um, he's been the champion, um, also the current Balkar champion. 
been wrestling since the age of 12. His first national championship came in 1998 at just age 15. Senior Olympic team at age 16. You know, youngest Romanian to do that. So again, looking at this guy with that big background, you know, not to say he's a well-rounded mixed martial artist yet, but, you know, he has shown improvement. He's undefeated, so I'm going to mention him. Looking at his record, he's beaten 8-4 and four Attila Vicar and 4-2 and two Ryan Valola. I will put a video of him up. It'll show the highlights. George Ignat. Next guy I'm going to talk about, Dennis Smolderlev. Estonian fighter, the second Estonian fighter. I believe the first was uh, um, Alex Reskett in the light heavyweight division. I got Smolder at six foot seven, two hundred and sixty pounds, so he is a monster. Just twenty two years of age, four and oh one TKO in submission, Estonia Academy of Kickboxing. Looking at his background, started training martial arts at age twelve, which was judo I believe, and then he started training combat sambo. He's competed in many sambo and kickboxing tournaments, um, to help him become a better well rounded fighter. I, I still think this guy has a lot of growing to do. Um he has fought some tough guys. I mean, look at his record. He's beaten 12-5 and five, Ahmed Sultanov. Sultanov is the guy who's got a victory over, you know, Bellator champion Alexander Volkov and Eric Paley. So that was a significant win for him. He's got a split decision win over 13-10, and 10, Dennis Compkin. Now, Compkin, you know, don't judge that guy by his record. He's a pretty tough guy as well. Um, and he's got, like I mentioned, a win over 7-1. and one. 205 pound fighter Alec Kesko who I mentioned in the light heavyweight division but I believe he was actually losing that fight until Kesko had the, the ankle injury I will cut, put a couple of his fights up here you know the fairly long fights but you know a guy to check out at his size 6'7", 216 still just a kid Dennis Molder next on the list Ante Delizia 6'5", 230 pounds just 22 years of age Jabrovic, Croatia, 6-0, and two knockouts, three submissions. Um, his background, he's on one of the biggest MMA teams in Czechoslovakia and Team Gladiator with the likes of Meryl Perak. Perak, of course, is the guy he spoke about uh, many years ago. I think we'll get to see him step up as well. But but also, you know, Harislav Slade, Agent and Malcolm. So it's a decent camp. Like most of his teammates, I believe, he has you know some sort of background in judo. Show speed, agility for a you know a big man. <clears throat> Still has a lot of improvement to do. Does have some good ground and pound and good power, as you will see in the highlight videos. Um, he just came off a dominating victory over Rico Rodriguez. Now he couldn't finish Rico, but it was definitely you know one side of fight, and he showed quite a bit of improvement. If you look at his early fights in his career to where he's at now, you can see a bit of an improvement there. So, you know, at that age and that size, is an interesting prospect. And again, looking at his record, the Rico Rodriguez victory was pretty, you know, significant. He's beaten 5-2 and two, Christoph Natasca. He's also got a big KO victory over an 8-8 eight and eight fighter, Drazen Forgal, who you'll see. Check out the video section. I've put down a couple of his fights and, you know, a big KO victory. And, of course, the Rico Rodriguez fight. Check him out, Ante Delizia. Next on the list, and this is a guy I discovered a few months ago, Nikita Frylov. Donetsk, Ukraine, 6'3", 250 pounds. Now, this is the, the interesting fact. 20 years old, fights at a YK promotion. Sherdog has him at 9-0. I know he had two recent fights right before Christmas. He's now 11-0. Two knockouts, nine submissions, 11 first-round stoppages. Remember, this guy's is just um, 20 years old. And all 11 of his fights have taken place this year. Not only this year, but in the last five months since August. So that's 11 victories, 11 first-round stoppages since August. <clears throat> 20 years of age. Very impressive, no matter what level of competition. Sambo background, appears to have a very slick ground game. Obviously, he, he needs a ton of improvement. Um, you know, I'm not sure about a stand-up because his fights end so quickly. He takes guys down to mix them, so... I haven't seen enough yet, but, you know, 11 and old, 20 years old, and six months, this guy's big, and he's a prospect for sure. Because it's the heavyweight division, it's very rare to have a guy like this. Like I said, very low-level competition, but with his record, age, and size, he's getting a nod in the mix. 
Check out the videos. I'll put three in the section below. Nikita Krylov. Next on the list, and I'm excited about this next fighter I'm going to talk about. He's Canadian. He's fighting a fellow Canadian coming up, I believe, in February. <clears throat> Mike Hacker fighting at a Victoria, B.C., Canada. The Zuma Association. Tom Max Valley Boxing Club. I think it was just in Vegas. Six, Just six feet tall. 230 pounds. 24 years of age. I think he was only 220 for his last fight. Or 222. Six foot, or sorry, six and one with one TKO. So he hasn't had a lot of finishes. But small heavyweight. Very good hands, solid striking, and a decent ground game with speed, agility, and he has a good gas tank. Big fight coming up with an undefeated Canadian fighter, fighter who I'm going to speak about next. Um, at MFC 36, at February 15th in Edmonton, really looking forward to that fight. Looking at what he's done, of course, two victories over UFC veteran uh, Tim Haig. One by TKO, one by decision. After their first fight, when she dominated, Hag wanted a rematch. He said he had an off night. They had the rematch, and basically, Mike Hacker walked through Tim Hag. Now I know Hag is not a you know a superstar, but Hag looked like he was three weight classes bigger than than Hacker. Hacker to me could fight at middleweight, but he says he feels great at 220. So you know all the power to him. Um, he's also beat six and three Daniel McIver who's a middleweight, and he's beat 5-1 Ryan James, who's also a middleweight. So this guy is not beating bums. He's beating good fighters. And, you know, check out the videos I put up. There's a couple of new, couple of videos I put up. One is Kyle Never Tap, and the other one is Kyle Mike Hackard. Check him out. <clears throat> very, very interesting fighter. Um, and next on the list is the guy who's going to fight, Molino Rama. Six feet tall. 260 pounds, you know, a little bit soft, but again, this guy is just 20 years old. Um, fighting at a Calgary, Alberta, Canada, I believe he's Albanian or Greek, that's where he originally came from, I think he moved to Canada five or six years ago. 5-0, and oh, two knockouts, three submissions, fighting at an independent MMA, all first round finishes, um, and all fights, I believe, were this year, you know, 2012. Started training MMA as a teenager, which of course is not too long ago, meaning that he's only 20. Um, you know, quick hands for a big man. Very comfortable on his feet and big power, and he uses the high kick. Um, carries his hands kind of low, so you know, I think you should correct that. Definitely against a guy like Hacker, because Hacker is going to use his boxing to win this fight, try to win this fight. Um, you know, needs to improve every, everywhere. His gas tank is a big question mark, you know, because I think he's a little soft because of the extra weight. It may be a factor against Hackard. He's got good submission skills, good takedowns. You know, it should be a very entertaining fight. Um, it's the first time in a while or the first time, you know, that I can even think of that we've had two quality heavyweights fighting each other. Now, a lot will argue, you know, when I say quality, do I say UFC material? Well, you know what? Nowadays, you look at some of the guys in there, and it wouldn't shock me to end up seeing both of these guys at some point in their career get into the UFC or definitely Bellator. So, I'm excited for the fight, and there's a good chance I'm going to get to see this one live. Um, looking at his record, he's beat Ryan Fortin, who's six and four, and I believe Fortin is he's six seven or six eight. He's also beat three and two Jordan. So, um, you know, this is a big fight that I, I'm looking forward to. It's Molino Rama versus Mike Hackard. Do yourself a favor, check it out, um, and I will put some videos, of course, of Rama in the section below. Next on the list, now this guy's an older fighter, but again, I recommend you checking this guy out. Harris Reeves, 5'11", 250, 8-1 eight with 8 knockouts. And, I, and when I say knockouts, I mean knockouts. I don't mean TKOs. I think he's 36 or 37, so he's up there. But again, being the heavyweight division, I'm including everybody who I think is legit prospect or ready to move up. Daikaden, Bosnia fighter. So I think this is the first Bosnian fighter he got, so that's cool. Frada Team Noguera is where he trains. This guy is a violent, violent striker. Nasty striker. Big KO power. Brutal knees in the clinch. He's got a 29-7 and Muay Thai record with 21 knockouts, and he's got over 100 karate fights. Um, NT MMA fighter, or sorry, is this guy an MMA fighter? I don't know. 
I don't see this guy having a ground game. I, I don't see this guy being well rounded, but I see this guy, if you're going to stand up with him, you ain't going to be around too long because this guy is a brutal striker. Um, he's he's fought a lot of Sudo Kleishkin. This is a full contact karate champion, Muay Thai international champion. He's got a kickboxing European title, and he's got the Shidokan championships. <clears throat> Looking at his records, um, you know, the combined record of his opponents are just 9 and 25, I think, of the guys he's beat. But he's got some brutal KOs. Do not check your, do not cheat yourself. Check out the videos in the information section below to see some brutal, brutal knockouts. Harris Reeves, check him out. I would love to see Harris Reed step in the ring and fight Pat Barry. Now, some people might criticize me for that, but I think it will be more than entertaining. And to say that he'd have no chance against... I Listen, I think Barry's a great... You know, he's, he's, he's an exciting fighter, but I think Reed can bang with him, with Barry, and it'd be interesting. So, Harris Reed, maybe this guy will get a shot. He is old. I think he's... I said 36. He may be older than that, so that's minimum. Check them out. Check the videos out. Next guy I'm going to talk about. Um, Ruan Potts. Cape Town, Western, Cape South Africa. <clears throat> African top team fighter. Boxing fitness. 6'2", 250. Again, 34 years of age. So he's at that borderline. 5-0 and with 4 knockouts, 1 submission. Looking at his background, he started judo at the age of 15. He's had a gold medal in the USA in National Judo Open and Heavyweight Open Division. Gold medal in the Abu Dhabi Pro-European Heavyweight Division in 2009. Two gold for African at the Abu Dhabi Championships, Heavyweight and Open Division. Gold medal in the SAAMF Soy Muay Thai Championships, Cape Town, Africa. Purple belt in BJJ under Ivan myself. A Brazilian second generation Gracie black belt. And I believe he is also <clears throat> a black belt in judo. Obviously, ground game is the strength. Improving his stand-up. Um, you know, game. Well-built. Physically aggressive. Strong athlete. Um, you know, closes the distance well. You know, utilizes the cage. Dirty boxing. Big ground and pound. Slicks the mission game. Check and note. Ram pots. He's rumored to have another 10 victories, so that, you know, in Africa, they say he's 15-0, South Africa. I got him at 5-0. I can't find any more footage on him. Looking at his record, he's beat 4-3, and three, Bernardo Mazzaki, Andrew Van Ziel, who's 6-1. That was a big victory. He defeated him, and they have a rematch coming up in March, I believe. He's also beaten 4-2, and two, <clears throat> Norman Vessels. You know, so at age 34, it's now or never. Check out the video section below for some entertaining stuff. Next on the list, Daniel Amizlikek. Warslow, Poland, 6 feet, 240 pounds, 30 years of age, 15 and 3 with one no contest and one draw. Team Natsdula with the likes of, you know, um, Jan Blakovich, who's the guy we'll see soon. Peter Strauss, Robert Jack, to name a few. Looking at his background, combat sambo. Kickboxing, Muay Thai, and Sanja background, which is interesting because most of his victories have come via submission. But this guy's a, a you know big time striker, two time winner of the Igor Vachenchen one night tournament where he won two and zero both of those one night. Master of Bushido, Bushido FC heavyweight champion 2011, amateur MMA control, Polish Cup, um, ALMMA seven. Polish Amateur 2007 Super Heavyweight Champ. Muay Thai, Polish Muay Thai Super Heavyweight Champion in 2007, 2008, 2009. Member of the Muay Thai National Team in 07, 08. Sanja, Warsaw Open Championship, sanctioned 90 kilograms. Polish International Sanjo category and the Sanjo International Tournament Champion of Austria. Um, again, looking at his record, 11 fight win streak. 14-1-1 over his last 16, and of course, most by submission, which is kind of opposite of what his strength is. Um, he's got a win over 8-6, and six, David Takisha, 3-2, and two, Blazi Wojcik, and 10-4, and four, Karol Solinski. All losses have come via close decision early in his career. He lost a couple of majority decisions, and a decision to kind of steam blown off, a striking decision. This guy's never been stopped. 
I'm not saying he's a superstar and he does carry a bit extra weight, but again, 15 and 3 in the heavyweight division. Another prospect, another guy you could throw into the mix. Check out the video section for some cool highlights. <clears throat> Next on the list is the, this guy's beast, and I'm guessing, you know, I don't know if I think, I don't know if he will pass a steroid test. I first seen this guy in June of last year, and he's been on the list for this video. I just, I'm busy and I can't make videos as often as I like. It's rumored he signed with Bellator, and you know what? Of course, I don't include fighters, but I can't find him on Bellator's roster, although I have seen and heard from legitimate friends of mine that this guy is signed on. I'm keeping him on the video. Nothing's official yet, but I'm telling you, this guy is could be a major player in the Bellator heavyweight tournament. Carl Etherton, I think he's a lot older. He may be 36 or 37. Um, at mixedmartialarts.com, they show him that his they show his record and they show his age. They show him at 4 and 0, and, and he show him at 30 years of age. But I think he's older than that. 7 and 0, three knockouts, four submissions. All first round stoppages. The longest fight was 50 seconds. Um, fights at Blackpool, Lancashire, England. Um, old school fight management team, <clears throat> of course, run by Neil Wayne. Second Dan Black Belt in judo and co competed for Great Britain. I, I think he was on the shortlist for the 2012 Olympic team. <clears throat> I know he was an alternate for the 2008 Beijing team. Um, two time British judo heavyweight champ. And I got him down as two-time uh, NW heavyweight champ, current UCMMA heavyweight champ. Do yourself a favor and check out the video links. I don't know if this guy's going to be the real deal. His gas tank will be a big question. The guy looks like Shane Carwin. Got decent takedowns. He's got some really good submission skills. I'm not going to say he's a striker. He's slick, but if he hits you, there's a good chance you're going to sleep, as you'll see in some of the videos. He's kind of a bullish, bulldog, rush kind of guy, so I, I don't know about stamina. And, you know, of course, like I mentioned, the striking is not slick, but it's dangerous. Don't know about his chin. You got to check out the videos. This guy, is, it shows this guy body slamming a 300 plus pound guy. He picks him up over his head like nothing. Um, you know, because of his judo background, because of his size and his strength, I know he's fought bums. The combined record of his opponents are 7-22. and 22. But with these brutal knockouts he has, the background, the size, he need, deserves a mention. I don't care how old he is. If he is signed with Bellator, or if they are thinking of signing him, this guy will give potentially all their heavyweight fighters problems. Guys, Tank will have a lot to do with it because this guy is on muscle, and that can be a bad thing, you know, in a fight. So, um... Stay tuned to Carl Etherton. Hopefully we see him in Bellator at minimum. Next on the list, Duke Didier. 6'4", 220 pounds, 23 years of age. Three knockouts, three submissions off first round. Canberra, Australia. In the critical territory, Australia, of course. Um, Hill Sports Academy. 15-year judo career. Four-time national judo champion. One-time National senior champion, two international tournament victories. He's shown some classic judo throws, slick ground game, submission savvy. Uh, his stand up and his takedowns are a big question. Um, you know, the guy is 23. He's got good size. He's not a heavy guy, but he's got the length, so he can fill out. Um, you know, he was on the shadow squad for the 2012 Olympics, and they say this guy is tailor-made and he's got an extraordinary shot at the 2016 Olympic team. Because of his judo background, because of his 3-0 start to his career and his age, he gets a nod. He's defeated Sam Kai. Now, Sam Kai was a guy who started his career at 8-0 with eight knockouts, and Didier put a halt to that. Um... Sorry, Chris Lockhart was 8-1. and one. Sam Kai had stopped Chris Lockhart. And, of course, Didier defeated Sam Kai. So that was a significant victory for him. Check out the videos in the section below. Make your decision, Duke Didier. Victor Pestra is the next guy. the 17th fighter I'm talking about. Czech Republic, just 22 years of age, 230 pounds. 
Sherrod actually is him a 6 0. He's actually 7 0, and they'll update the record when they catch up to things. Uh, Pester, Jim, and Prague. Background note he has had some MMA amateur fights. I'm not sure on his record. I know he has at least lost once as an amateur. Um, five as a professional, being at 7 0. Five, five of those victories have come in the first round. <clears throat> I have limited footage and background on this guy. He appears to have, you know, a, a, a decent ground game, you know, not a big heavy weight, and I have no idea what his stand-up's like. I haven't seen enough of it. His record, he's beaten 3-1, three and, three and one, professional 1-0, one and oh, Christian Colombo. The Colombo was 1-0 oh as an amateur. He's beaten 3-3, three and three, Vita Marata, and, you know, like I said, his opponents have also been low level, but he's 22 years old. It's the heavyweight division. He's 7 and 0. He's going to get a look. Victor Pestra. The 18th fighter I'm going to mention in the heavyweight division video, Orlando Sanchez. Pasadena, California, USA. Gracie Barra, Pasadena. Uh, Kings MMA as well. Orlando Sanchez, 5'9", 235 pounds, 30 years of age. 3-0, two knockouts, one submission. I believe he fought last night, or the night before last, which would have been January the 19th. And I haven't got an update in that card. I think they had a technical draw. For whatever reason, the fight got, got held up. Kings MMA gets some decent training partners in Brett Cooper, uh, Eddie Sanchez, Eric Apple, Jamie Yager, Gracie Barra, Jiu-Jitsu Black Belt. And very quickly, jiu-jitsu black belt, and just after four years of training. You know, that's a high level to get a black belt off Gracie Berry. Runs Gracie Berry Academy in Pasadena, California. Numerous gold medals in jiu-jitsu uh, and, and Pan American jiu-jitsu championships. Two Brazilian nationals, um, you know, Gracie Nationals, Grappler's Quest, Abu Dhabi, World Pro North American Trials. This guy used to be 350 pounds. You know, of course, with his jiu-jitsu being as strong as it is, he showed some big-time ground and pound in his fight. Surprisingly, that's pretty much how he's been winning with some ground and pound. But this guy is, you know, very fast for, you know, a short, stocky guy, and he's very motivated. He's got a victory over 7-4, and four, Juan Miranda, and 3-2, and two, William Wheeler. So, check out the videos, Orlando Sanchez. Spot Joe for him. The next bunch of guys I'm going to talk about, I'm going to run through them fairly quickly. Fernando Camosi, Brazilian fighter, 27, 255 pounds, 4 0, 2 TKO, 2 submissions. Um, I did have some video footage of this guy, but somebody taken it off YouTube, which showed his last fight, I believe. Um, he's got a, a victory over 2 1 Marcio Tellez and 2 1 Vinicius Lima. Um, again, you know, I don't know a lot about this guy, but it's the heavyweight division. I wanted to talk about some guys. Fernando Camosi, got to watch for. Next guy is Olen Omuldi Najebi. Originally from France, fights at a Montreal, Canada, at TriStar Gym. Of course, with GSP and Francis Paramount and Yves Weban. Sometimes Miguel Torres stops by. David Loazzo, Rory McDonald, Ryan Ford. Rick Hahn is known to stop by John McDessie. So, as good a camp as you're going to get. 6'3", 237 pounds. I do not have an age in this guy. I've heard he's in the late 20s. 1-0, and made his professional debut last year. One knockout. Um, he beat 7'4", seven foot, seven foot Radu Spingo in just 43 seconds. Rumor has it this guy has some pretty high-level striking and some well-roundedness on the ground as well. From what I'm told from some of my friends from... Montreal, um, you know, I'd like to see for myself, again, no video footage, but I wanted to include him on the list, um, may you be a guy to watch out for, the 21st guy I'm going to talk about, you will not find this guy on Sheridan, <coughs> Max Lawson, American fighter, 29 years of age, 265 pounds is what I'm seeing, I don't know if he is that big, 2-0 as an amateur with two submissions. Former Big Ten Championship wrestler. Um, you know, first in the Muskegon Open. All-conference honors in wrestling. 
He wrestled for Minis the Minnesota Storm Club team, I, I think. I was, you know, University, uh, Michigan State. He's been in there with the big boys. I believe he's wrestled, you know, the Cole Conrad's of the world, those kind of guys. He's got a big first-round submission victory over 9-3 and three, Joseph Ray. Joseph Ray, 9-3 and three, as an amateur. Check out the guy's highlight videos. A couple of dandies here. He shows some really good wrestling, some good slams, good control, good submission skills. You know, very good good shape for a man that size. I don't have a height, but he looks to be at least 6'4 or 6'5. And, you know, every bit of 260. Excellent condition athlete. Max Lassen. Hopefully we get to see this guy turn pro and you get to see more of him. Next guy I'm going to talk about. Former basketball star. You know, he star in, in university, I believe, and had some trials with the NBA over a stint of a couple of years. Walter Harris, 6'4". They got him listed as 255. He says he walks around 245, you know, weighs about late 238, 239 for his fights. Sure Dog has him at 4-1. He's in fact 5-1 with 5 knockouts. 23-1 as an amateur. Now that's, I think that's his combined record for boxing and for MMA as an amateur. So they kind of have it lumped together. Homewood, Alabama, USA. Champions Freestyle Fitness in Birmingham was the club he was training at. Now, I believe we've switched over to American Top Team, and that could be significant. For a man, you know, this athletically gifted, he's got big takedowns, good power, and, you know, surprisingly, his striking is good for a guy that came from one sport to another. He's, he's a southpaw, and he throws straight punches. His wrestling is a little underrated. I think it looks decent. He's a big, strong guy. He's got some pretty brutal ground and pound. Um, he's got a victory over 8-4 and four amateur Marlon Smith, and he's also beat Greg Jackson's prospect, heavyweight, 8-2 and two, Anthony Hamilton. Um, he lost the close decision to 7-1 Chris Barnett. Now, some of you guys will be familiar with Barnett, the beast. Hasn't fought in a couple of years, I think, or a year and a half. He was 7-1, and one, you know, heavy guy, but phenomenal wrestler. And actually, um, Barnett came into that fight, get this, 29 pounds overweight. So, you know, uh, it was a fight that Harris could have um, <clears throat> denied or, you know, what, not went through it, but he wanted, you know, has the fighting spirit, so he went on, and he did lose the fight, but it was a close decision. 29 pounds is significant. Um... I think this guy will get a shot. He's a well-known American guy, and he's athletic, he's well-built, and I think he gets a shot soon. Walter Harris. 23 on the list, Marcin Tibera. Put in Evelats, Poland, 27 years of age, 6'4", or sorry, 245 pounds. I don't have an exact height in this guy, but he's well over 6 feet. 6 and all, 1 knockout, 3 submissions, United Gym. Show some decent takedowns. This guy's background is jiu-jitsu. Though. He's got a good top game. Um, you know, he's competed and won multiple tournaments, including the Open World Trials this past March, where he won the Purple Belt Division, the Open Division. Um, and also, I think he may have just signed with N1 Global, which may be a bad thing for fans in the, in the West, because, you, you know, a lot of M1, once M1 gets you, you're usually locked. I think he signed a five or six five or six fight deal with them, so we'll see if that plays out. Um, looking at his record, I mean, he's not a guy that you look at and he's not like, he doesn't have like this the six pack, he's he's not ripped by any means, but he's got a couple of significant victories. He's beat 3 and 1 Christoph Koptowski and 10 and 3 uh, Simon Bajer, so that was a significant victory for him. Check out the video section, make your own judgment if you think he's half decent. Number 24 on the list, he worked in Teixeira. Sao Paulo, Brazil, had a champion team with the likes of Eddie Berto, De Oliveira, Nelson Gomez, Hugo Viana. 6'1", 240, 30 years of age, 2-0 with two knockouts, I believe, two knockouts, or, or one knockout, one decision. Um, Kroistin karate background and a big K1 background. 2008 K1 World Grand Prix title in Fukuda. The new sparring partner of JDS Junior Dos Santos. Numerous tournaments in K1 and Kuyogashi Karate. He defeated the likes of Errol Zimmerman and Jerome LeBanner in K1. So he's had some entertaining fights there. 
He does have a brutal KO last year over him. Pretty brutal name, but you know what? This guy is a good striker, and the heavyweight division needs these kind of guys. Um, I think he's an interesting prospect. I don't think he's well rounded. I think he can put on. He can. You can put him in to get some entertaining fights. You know, the more heavyweights, the better. Especially guys that can strike. He can. You know, kind of mix things up a bit. Both of his fights has been low level, but he says he, you know, he wants to keep fighting him on and karate. But his main focus is MMA, so that's interesting. That means you know we may see more of this guy. Check out the videos for sure. His fight with Zimmerman I'll put on, and also he's got a, a brutal knockout over a, a Alex Roberts in K1. Check it out in the video information before below. E. Wharton checks there out. Next guy on the list, now this is a guy by his record, you know, you wouldn't think much, but I think this guy is one of the better guys on the list as far as potential of being a, you know, a legitimate heavyweight fighter. Michael Andrasak, 6'5", 245 pounds, just 20 years old, 6 wins, 2 losses, one of those might have, be, might have been as an amateur, he's got one no contest, 2 TKO, 4 submissions, this guy finishes fights, um... Fighting divisions, Bioko is his, the camp he trains out of. This guy throws knees. He works good from the clinch. He uses the low kick, uses the cage, the dirty box, and he's shown some big takedowns, big slams in his fights. Um, this guy shows slick submission skills, like judo throws, and he, he does a lot on the ground. He's, he's looked impressive, and he's a good striker. That's one of the reasons I first looked at him because of his striking, and turns out the guy can submit you. Um, I'll put some videos up. He's got a brutal head kick KO, which you'll see, and you know some very slick submissions. So I'm going to have five or six videos of this guy up. I recommend you check them out. He's beaten four and three James Harrell and twelve and eight Marcin Zontek. Um, you know, six and two is not the flashy record, but this guy is. I think he's better than a six and two fighter. And I think he's because of his size and his age and his ability to strike and to submit you. I think he's an interesting prospect. And I think there's potential for this guy. If you go in two or three fights, you'll see this guy get a shot. You know, Poland seems to be pumping out quite a decent amount of fighters, you know, from middleweight right up to heavyweight. So it's, the sport is big in Poland. It seems to be growing. Um, check out the video section. Michael Andrasak, a very interesting prospect. Number 26, and the last guy I'm going to talk about, and again, I could have included a lot more, Ibrahim Ibrahimov, um, 6'1", 245, 30 years of age, Sochi, Russia, fights on a Legion fight team, one of the bigger teams in Russia, of course, 4-1, uh, two knockouts, two submissions. I don't know if this is the same Ibrahimov, who's the arm wrestling world champion, I'm not sure. Again, I have limited information on this guy, and I don't have time to spend doing, you know, countless hours to check him for background checks. I'd like to, but I'm too busy with work. Um, you know, a little bit loose around his stomach, but this guy looks legitimate. When he gets the chokehold on him, you better tap or you're going to sleep. He's got a victory over 9-3, and three, Evgeny Mayakin. Now, that was a, a guillotine choke victory, and he put Mayakin to sleep. And I mean, this guy was asleep for a good 30 seconds. He's beaten 7-4, Dennis Koltov, another nice victory for him. And he's beaten fate, you know, one-time fate or a prodigy, Cairo Sedelnikov. Sedelnikov. His only loss was the disqualification for a soccer kicks against Valery Shlokovkov. And that fight, he was well on his way to winning. Um, I do have one video of him, and it's the victory over Evgeny Malkinan. Check it out, and you'll see what I mean. He puts him to sleep big time. Um, you know, so... Maybe not the flashiest heavyweight, but a guy that's, you know, pretty much undefeated because of his disqualification uh, loss. But, you know, a nice way to round out this video. So I, I spoke about 26 fighters. I probably could have had another dozen or so. You know, I could have mixed and match. These are the guys I wanted to talk about. And to me, it's probably the most depth to any heavyweight video I've done. 26 guys. And, you know, I'd be surprised if we don't see a large number of these guys at least fight in, you know, Bellator or UFC or who knows, World Series of Fighting. M1 for sure will pick see some of these guys up. Some of them have already fought in M1. So, to me, the heavyweight division is is getting bigger and bigger. 
Some people kind of mock the heavyweight division, but we've got 30 guys fighting in the UFC, and we've got a couple of interesting fighters in Bellator. So, you know, I, for one, do like the heavyweight division. I, I, the more fighters we get, the better. So, um, you know, that does it for the heavyweight video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'd like to get lots of feedback. You know, let me know what you think of some of these guys, if you think some of them are legitimate. And I'm sure there's guys that you guys would like to have mentioned as well. So, um, that's six out of eight videos complete. You know, again, thanks for all the views and stuff. It's been great. Continue with the comments and, you know, messages, that kind of stuff. And the last two videos will be um, the welterweight division and the flyweight division. I'm not going to do a, a woman's... Uh, uh, prospects, but probably next year I will. I'll add them to the mix. It may take me a while to get the last two videos out because I'm completely swamped for work. Even to get these ones out, it's very hard for me because it's not something I can just put together. By the time you do the biographies and set the video up, you know, it's very time consuming and, you know, work is starting to get crazy in the new year. So at some point, of course, within the next month, you'll see the last two videos put out. And uh, I look forward to not only putting those videos out, but to hearing from you guys. So thanks for tuning in, and I hope you enjoyed the heavyweight uh, prospects video. We'll see you in the next week or two with uh, part seven. Thank you.